It has been asked several times on this channel, is City Pass worth it? As the sages would say, the world is not black and white, and so goes the answer to this question. It depends. So in this video, we are going to take a closer look at City Pass, what it is, what attractions are offered, and we'll break down two packages that they have and touch a little bit on other discounts aside from City Pass. Welcome to Urban Caffeine. Show some love by hitting that like button. New York City has many, many attractions. These usually range anywhere from free to up to a few hundred dollars. But if you limit attractions to just museums, observation decks, and cruises, you're looking at a range of $25 to $50 per attraction. In comes City Pass. City Pass is a company that sells discounted ticket packages on top attractions in different cities. The idea is that since you're buying a package, you save on the total cost versus buying individual tickets. But because attractions vary in range, the question is, are you really getting a deal? But before we get into the packages, let's take a look at what attractions are offered. Attractions that you can find on the City Pass menu are all either an observation deck, a museum, or a ferry ride. Starting with the observation decks, this is where they're located in Manhattan. Top of the Rock is my personal favorite, since it has an unobstructed view of the city. It's actually pretty underrated. It has a pretty good vantage point of Central Park and the Upper East and West Sides, as well as the lower half of Manhattan. And from here, you can see the Empire State Building. The Empire State Building is as classic as they come. The outdoor corridor is open air, but you do have a fenced view of the city. However, this building carries a lot of history. And near the Hudson River is the edge. Here, the deck is surrounded with clear glass. And there's also a glass floor if your pulse is up for it. Moving on to the museums. The museums offered by City Pass are pretty much scattered around Manhattan, which can be a good thing if you aim to explore as much of the city as possible. But moving around if you don't plan for it can be time consuming. The memorial portion of 9-11 is actually free to visit. The memorial is the water feature that stands in the place of the original footprints of the Twin Towers. The museum is where you will need a ticket for entry. Once you enter the museum, you will be led underground beneath the memorial. The Intrepid was a former aircraft carrier during World War II. It was decommissioned and re-outfitted to be a floating museum on the Hudson River. If you enjoy military history, aircrafts, submarines, or just want to see the Space Shuttle Enterprise, the Intrepid is where it's at. The Museum of Modern Art has one of the largest collections of modern and contemporary art. If you're a fan, this museum is for you. They also have a sculpture garden and a Michelin-rated restaurant called The Modern. The American Museum of Natural History is both a museum and planetarium. So if dinosaurs and space are your jam, you might enjoy this museum. And the Guggenheim is highly popular for the unique design of the building itself. It features art from the Impressionist, Post-Impressionist, Modern, and Contemporary era. Now on to the ferry rides. Liberty Island has the Statue of Liberty, and Ellis Island has the Immigration Museum. These two are actually free, but the ferry ride to the islands is not. The only ferry that can take you to both these islands is the Statue City Cruises. I have an entire video on how to visit the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. Link to that is in the description below. This same company also does regular cruises. One is more of a party cruise with drinks and food, and the other is a guided sightseeing tour on the water. 
Circle Line is another cruise company and they have two cruise options on the list. Both cruises will sail by Liberty Island but will not dock. For New York City, City Pass offers two different packages. The first package, which includes five attractions, automatically includes the Empire State Building and the Natural History Museum. Then you get to choose three other attractions, but your choices are a bit restricted because you have to choose certain attractions over another. Since Top of the Rock is an observatory, if you choose that over the Guggenheim, then you are now going to two observatories, the other one being the Empire State Building. Unless you really like observation decks, you might want to consider the Guggenheim over a second observatory. When it comes to these two, like mentioned earlier, one will actually dock at Liberty Island so you can get up close with the Statue of Liberty as well as visit the Immigration Museum on Ellis Island. However, this might take up your entire day, while the other option will be a cruise that will sail by Liberty Island. The advantage of choosing a cruise over docking at Liberty Island and Ellis Island is that you are saving time. And the last choice you have with this first package is between the 9-11 Museum and the Intrepid. Both are great museums and I personally have a hard time choosing. But something to note here is that if you happen to be a veteran or military member, you can get into the Intrepid for free. With 9-11, veterans get a discount and active and retired military get in for free. Admission is also offered for free at 3.30pm on Mondays. And I'll talk about other discounts later in this video. To really determine if this package is worth it is by looking at the a la carte prices. If you are already planning to go to the Empire State Building and Natural History Museum anyways, and these other attractions interest you, then yes, absolutely, the City Pass is worth purchasing. Because say you bought the cheapest ticket options individually. And by the way, when the Guggenheim is in the middle of changing special exhibits, tickets are heavily discounted since you won't be able to see the entire museum. And if you add up the cheapest ticket options, City Pass still comes out ahead. But these prices are based on adult pricing. Children, military, veterans, senior citizens, and even students might be able to score discounts. And we'll talk about discounts here soon. However, if the Empire State Building and or Natural History Museum are not your cup of tea, then there's a second package to consider. For $92, you can choose any three attractions from this list to include a few more options not offered in the first package. But this is where you'll have to do some math, because some combinations just don't make sense. Say you want to go to the Guggenheim, MoMA, and Liberty Island. You're not really getting a good deal with the C3 Pass, so you might as well just buy tickets individually. But if you're going to say Top of the Rock, Liberty Island, and the Intrepid, then yes, the C3 Pass is worth it. If you're a student, military, veteran, or senior citizen, you might be better off getting tickets individually. A lot of these attractions have special discounts or even a family pass. If you're military, check out this website that has a pretty comprehensive list of military discounts for you and your family. Link is in the description below. Let me know if you're interested in a video on just military and veteran discounts in New York City. I'm a vet myself, so from one vet to other vets out there, thank you for your service. On top of student, military, and senior discounts, many museums offer free days or free hours. Link to this webpage is in the description below. But as a tourist, I would recommend just buying a ticket if you want guaranteed entry. Free days and free hours are more meant for locals who are able to wait out free tickets. And speaking of free, on the last Saturday of every month, Urban Caffeine publishes a video of free things to do, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel. So that's the breakdown on City Pass. My advice is to list down places you want to visit first and then see if they are on the City Pass list and compare prices. Because as the wise say, it's not a sale if you weren't going to buy it anyways. A big thank you to all Urban Caffeine financiers, especially to all the members of our Patreon community. Patreon members have access to my personal NYC and Creator blog, as well as free artwork and recently some free stickers. If you'd like to be part of this community, check out patreon.com slash urbancaffeine. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and happy New Yorking!